What's happening, guys? This is getting a getting kind of a slow and steady. What we'd call a recovery rock in. Pretty lightweight. People ask me a lot, what what are you using for weights on your rocks? Again, this is a recovery <clears throat> steady state type of rock. Slow. Uh, lightweight, so I'm about just over 10% of body weight uh, in the plate carrier here. And that, uh, that works out pretty well. So you, a good way to, to think about your uh, steady state recovery, the slow, slow kind of like, I'm sure you've heard the term tempo runs for the for runners out there. And that type of training, the zone two, right? We hear that a lot, but what the hell is it? Well, that's gonna have you basically at an intensity that is sustainable over a long period of time. And typically, kind of like I'm doing here, you can link, link sentences together. You know, like if I was going super hard, I might be able to get one sentence out and it's like, whew, I gotta catch my breath before I can get another sentence out of my mouth. Zone two, your, your slow, steady stuff, you should be able to, you know, it might be a little bit strained, but you should be able to link those sentences together. And guys, this is, this is important. I mean, the, it's not so like sexy as the high intensity intervals or conditioning work that see people, you know, myself included, you get done on a, you know, fan bike interval session and you're laying on the floor fucking <clears throat> staring up at the heavens like, am I going to make it? And you do, like, that's important. We need to challenge those lactate thresholds and our aerobic capacity as well. But the fact of the matter is, if if you can't, if you're not getting in the, the uh, kind of the tempo work, zone two work, you won't even, you haven't like paid your dues to even survive those types of sessions. Uh, and even if you do survive, you'll never be at optimal or peak capacity for for your own for your own body like you're never going to reach that point because you simply can't supply the oxygen um the fuel uh, needed to sustain high intensity work over longer periods of time you know and that's really the name of the game even even a track and field sprinter you know take like the 100 meter sprinter for example might be like well what the hell does that what the hell does that athlete need the slow steady stuff well how are they going to handle 150 meter repeats if they can't provide the energy substrates to to the muscles uh without blowing up you know so there's like this foundation there's this engine that's needed uh first and foremost so you you, you can't you can't go without it and that's where rucking you know like some people just mentally can't just can't handle it it's like it's just boring I can't just walk slow for a or ride my bike or you know cross-country ski or swim for long periods of time at a slow pace it's just too freaking boring and I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Well, <laughs> that is kind of the point. Um, but rucking, like I said, I'm just over 10% of body weight. This allows me to, so the load carrying uh, component increases the metabolic cost of the activity, basically how demanding it is at the same speed so if i do this same if i do the same hike 
and I don't have the vest on, I'm not the, the intensity, the metabolic cost of that training session is much lower all at the same speed. So for me, it allows, it allows me to potentially kind of beat that, <laughs> the boredom, but also, um, I'm also training my, my frame, the connective tissues to handle light loads over longer periods of time, which when it comes to my real sport of hunting, that's the name of the game. You know, when it comes to the gear that I have on, um, and probably somewhere around 10 to 15 pounds of total external load, uh, but over the course of like full day, daylight till dark. So this is great transfer of training uh, to the sport, the, the sport demands, and it allows me to improve um, like my oxygen carrying capacity of the blood and basically create a, a system that is more oxygen ready, um, for the potential of, you know, higher intensity activity. So rucking is, again, I, you know, I talk about it a lot. Rucking is an awesome way to improve your health and fitness whether you want to be a load carrying athlete or not, I don't care if you're going for a walk in the neighborhood. Not everybody has access to, you know, incline like I'm in right now. Uh, but that's fine. If I was on flatter ground, I would increase the load just a little bit. And that would in turn increase the intensity at the same speed. So maybe a little long winded there. But uh, all I'm trying to say is one, don't neglect your slow and steady, call it recovery work. Uh, get it in at least a couple times a week. If you don't have time for at least one of these, I think you're full of shit <laughs> because nobody's that busy. But you can also microdose it by getting it in at the end of your workout each session. 10 minutes, even going nasal only, uh, can make a huge difference over time. And no, it's not gonna crush your fucking gains. Um, it's not, <laughs> sorry, that's not, not true. So it's also gonna help you live longer, happier, healthier, and be able to do the things you love for longer, period of time and that's, that's the name of the game right the long game keep charging guys